Okay, this is Patty Expats is live on Zoom and on Facebook. We have Dr. Campone back with us. Niels, you want to do a brief introduction or did we lose Niels again? Or did we lose Niels? I'm here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, mm -hmm. got my, my little one wants to participate. Okay, oh. <laughs> everybody's here. I'll let Niels do a brief introduction. And Dr. Campone, do you want me to play the video first and then you'll yes, talk? Yes. Okay, yes, cool. Yes. So I just yes. want to make sure we got it right. All right, go ahead, Niels, and I'll mute myself. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. And uh, we are now uh, to embark on a new Zoom, a COVID uh, information Zoom. Uh, last week, we uh, had a lot of positive response back from people who had been joining the Zoom and uh, who appreciated very, very much Dr. Campon's uh, very straight to the bone information about uh, COVID, the vaccines and everything that goes with it. And uh, uh, today, uh, Dr. Campon have uh, gone to great lengths to record a message uh, to make it even more exact uh, for all of us. And it's, it's amazing. We really are thankful to uh, Dr. Campon. And uh, I want, um, with no further ado, to get on with, uh, with our Zoom meeting today. So welcome everyone, and especially a big, big, big thank to Dr. Campon to come here and give his valuable time to all of us here in Padilla. Thank you. And I look forward to a great Zoom now. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. What I'm going to do, yeah, Gary's trying to get in. Okay. What I'm going to do now is share my screen and share my sound and play his video intro. There we go. Hello. My name is Dr. Kapun Sivanakun. At present, I'm working as a medical director of RRC Center at Bayouette Hospital. One of my lessons now is working toward medical tourism business as well as wellness tourism. So the information that I would like to address to all of you today will be those expats who live in Thailand. I understand that you will need also to be supported to allow you to travel back home and come back to Thailand without having to have strict restriction as we all have faced now. One of the easiest way to get over this problem will be receiving proper COVID-19 vaccination. I think you may have heard that we have a lot of uh, discussion about the type of vaccine to be given to the Thai population. So, Right now, I have to say that the government is not ready yet uh, to support the expat community. So being one of the researchers and senior doctors working in area of immunity as well as the area of regenerative medicine, I would like to give you some suggestion how to receive vaccine properly. At present, as you know, there are three types of vaccine available in the market. The first type of vaccine is called dead virus vaccine. And the uh, one that has been produced mainly come from Chinese vaccine by using the trade name of Sinovac and recently Sinopharm. Both vaccine will have about 52% effectiveness in preventing any person to receive infection after they receive the full vaccination program. In general, you will require to take two consecutive doses around four to six weeks apart. Now, please do remember that do not miss the second shot of vaccine. Otherwise, the effectiveness will not be achieved as expected. And please also 
remember that the side effects due to vaccination will usually occur much more during the second in immunization. So therefore, please be aware of nothing about any side effect and you must learn the way how to minimize or prevent it. The second type of vaccine is called viral vector vaccine, which usually made from adenovirus, which do not cause diseases in humans. And this type of vaccine, one of the examples will be AstraZeneca, and the one will be coming from USA called Johnson & Johnson. This kind of vaccine have more effectiveness, around 67% after injection. And here again, you will need to have two consecutive doses of vaccination as well. Now, the third type of vaccination is called messenger RNA vaccine or mRNA vaccine. This is more specific to spike protein of the coronaviruses. It is more effective in preventing spreading of virus more than the other two types of vaccine. And it has been approved by World Health Organization. And it allows also to receive what we call vaccine passport, to be able to travel without much restriction. Now, as a rule, the, the vaccine developed, it has been tested that it is generally safe and for those who de decide to leave, uh, receive the immunization, you also have to realize that the effectiveness of around 52% something like in the case of Sinovac, after you receive the immunization, you may be able to get infection caused by COVID-19. However, you will not have the serious illnesses if you have been vaccinated prior to be infected. Now, I have mentioned that if the citizen of any particular countries can receive up to 70% immunization program, it's considered to provide herd immunity. That means that after we having a shift of herd immunity, we can travel more freely and enjoy the entrance in many uh, public and private places. Now, in order to receive the vaccination, please try to learn about the different type of vaccine and how you have to prepare yourself in order to be able to receive vaccination very safely. I will not go in detail as yet. However, when do you reach the stage of going to receive vaccination, please feel free to ask for online consultation. Now, for those for many reasons that they do not want to receive vaccination or they have serious diseases that will not allow them to be immunized with safety. I would suggest that we must learn to make our body have very strong immunity. The technique can be called auto-vaccination. And one of the simplest way is to take some nutrition supplements or some herbal formulation that can enhance your immunity, that be able to prevent the infection to happening in your body. You also will learn that there are many alternative methods like expose more to the sunlight, take more of vitamin C, vitamin D, selenium, and some of the 
herbal formulation that can help you to fight against COVID-19. I also would like to end my discussion today by telling you that we would like to give you the series of a webinar or Zoom presentation. And for those of you who would like to ask any specific information, you can send uh, to our contact either before the setup of Zoom meeting or when you have joined the Zoom meeting at the particular time and places. I would like to propose that I will try my best to support the experts and their family to be able to receive the proper immunization that they need and allow them to travel freely back to their country and return to Thailand without too much restriction and isolation. So please keep in touch and look forward to continue uh, talking to you in more detail later. Thank you very much for your high attention. Okay, that was quite informative. Let me see, Dr. Kampong, can you unmute yourself? Uh, there was background noise before, so you're muted at the moment. Can you unmute yourself? You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, there, we there we go. There we go. Please uh, ask any questions that the participants. Okay, we have some. We had some questions come in that I think would have hopefully were forwarded to you. If not, one moment. <clears throat> okay. First set of questions. Um, in the United States. The Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS, tracks vaccine-related in injuries, including those from the experimental COVID-19 injections. UK and European countries have similar databases. What is the link to the corresponding public database in Thailand that tracks injuries and deaths from COVID-19 vaccinations? Okay, uh, this question, uh, we will need to finalize in the near future. However, we have uh, three governmental agencies responsible for uh, monitoring adverse effects of uh, COVID vaccine. The first one is called uh, Department of Disease Control, belong to Ministry of Public Health. Uh, the second one is uh, Adverse Drug Reaction Monitoring Center of the Thai Food and Drug. Administration or Thai FDA. The third one is uh, National Vaccine Center. And at present, these three agencies, they are responsible for monitoring, uh, take care of unwanted event and handle the safety of the uh, vaccination. However, I have to tell you that uh, Thailand, as we Ministry of Public Health, is facing a lot of problem in order to support the Thai population. Therefore, I'm not so sure how well advanced they can achieve compiling to US or in European countries. We are something. But yeah. question though also, is there a public database for adverse reactions in Thailand? Or if somebody, for argument's sake, I go get up, I go and I'm able to get uh, vaccinated, I get Sinovac, and then I get blood, blood clots, and I have to go to the hospital and all that stuff. Uh, where does that get reported, or how does that get reported, and is that information available? Okay, uh, before I answer that question, I have to tell you that we are facing what we call new normal. This kind of situation never happened in our part of the world before. so. Uh, we will be using the basic thing that we have done in the past. Uh, starting from those who like to receive the vaccination, 
they have to uh, register themselves with the government or private hospital group, depending on who they are. For the expat, uh, we will need to offer you the alternative vaccine that maybe uh, you have to register with the private hospital in Thailand. And after you being registered, they will set up the communication and ask you to come and offer you the uh, vaccination. We are trying our best to monitor from the hospital that provide you the injection. At present, they have, we have many uh, groups that working on that kind of things. But here again, I please uh, be so high to be patient because uh, we are doing our best to support the expert community now. Good news is the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs has announced that they would like to start to offer the vaccination for expat starting from June, which is this month. Good. Next question that came in. There are reports that women who take birth control pills are at increased risks of blood clots if they have a COVID vac vaccination. How much greater risk does the COVID vaccine create for this group, in your opinion, or if okay. there's any studies? Uh, actually, this is quite a complicated issue. Uh, we have found out that uh, during menstruation, because of the females will start to have high level of estrogen hormone. Estrogen hormone is itself responsible to making blood clot more easy than usual. So uh, I'm not so sure that we have enough clear data to prove that vaccination will increase the risk. But my professional suggestion will be that it's advisable if you can delay your vaccination after you start to have your menstruation, that might be a good idea because delay for a few days or week, it probably will not cause much effect. Uh, so therefore my answer is that don't worry too much about this uh, problem in Thailand. However, it's also to be cautious that do not uh, try to avoid vaccination during menstruation period. Thank you. Next question. Someone's parents live with him in Thailand or her, I can't remember who sent me this. They're 93 and 90. Many information he's read and received argues against giving them a vaccination because the risk is too high. Um, what's your view on 90 plus year olds and risks or increased risks from getting vaccinated? Okay, I start with the scientific comment first. Uh, during the development of vaccination, we do not have quite a large number of those who are older than 80 years old. So therefore, I think that for those who are a bit too old, they should not try to receive vaccination unless it's necessary. For example, if they are mostly stay at home and do not going outside, there's no need for them to receive vaccination in any way. So therefore, with this uh, 92 years old and 93 years old couple, I, I would suggest that they should consider uh, to check with the authority first whether it's necessary but for my opinion, it will not be necessary if they are not traveling. And I guess unless they have younger people in the household who are going to come see them oh. and all that kind of stuff. No, no. Uh, on the country, uh, we must try our best to vaccinate the younger individuals in their family because they are the ones who carry in the, the infectant uh, particles, not the old people. Gotcha. Next question. This one we didn't send to you, so um, you might need a second to think. Here, here's an interesting one, and I've seen this out there, so you've probably seen this. The, this is a statement or a question. Why give a risky COVID jab 
to adults with about a 99% survival rate from infection and to children with a nearly 0% infection rate? That, that's the first question. Okay. You mean that's the, the question I is why COVID, COVID in Thailand is, is very mm -hmm. survivable, very few deaths relative to the whole population. It's 0. 0.0000 something of the population have died with COVID. So mm -hmm. worldwide, it's like one per, less than 1% or 1% ish. I don't know, depends on how old you are. So his question is, why give a risky COVID vaccination when the underlying disease catching COVID, except if you're really old, is has a 99 plus percent survival rate and the chance of infection for younger people, children especially, is nearly zero. So that's his question. Why, why, should, why should people get vaccinated when the survivability of the underlying thing the vaccine's supposed to help protect against, and we could talk about that one too, uh, it has a 99% survival rate. Okay, uh, let me uh, tell you again about scientific fact. Uh, COVID-19 is uh, something new. And also it so happened that it had many violence happening. So therefore, I do not agree that the risk of COVID infection will be as low as we may have thought. Okay, now, in principle, I do not uh, suggest young individuals and very old people to take immunization for many reasons. So therefore, the other population that working up after 18 years old, maybe up to 65, they will need to be vaccinated because they are the one need to be traveling or working. Uh, so therefore, for those 18 years old, up to 65 years old, I think it's worthwhile for them to receive vaccination because we can also support economical development especially allow them to travel freely. Next, next question he had. Some people will refuse to get vaccinated. What have you heard or what's out there on how authorities, he's specifically talking about Thailand, uh, will react to that situation? Forcibly injected, fined, jailed, quarantined, expelled from Thailand. It, has there been anything published or anything discussed? I haven't seen it myself. That if somebody doesn't get vaccinated, isn't vaccinated, um, what will happen? Okay, you get uh, most of the news and uh, information that has been spread. Most of them have not been well documented by uh, evidence-based medicine. So therefore, I would suggest that uh, you must try to understand more with so-called the medical authority, including the WHO or that regard. Now, uh, having said that, uh, we will need also to avoid what I can call fear because too much fear will cause a lot of problem and we should not be, uh, not to be afraid at all. So therefore, we should try to develop a way to live with COVID in a scientific way and make sure that we can allow ourselves to travel freely. Gotcha. Next question that he had, here's an interesting one. For COVID testing, where is the saliva spit test allowed in lieu of the RT-PCR test? Because as it's known, RT-PCR often spits out false positive when they run it 40 to 45 CT. And even Fauci admits that running PCR above 35 CTs yields inaccurate results. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's another uh, controversial issue regarding COVID tests. Okay, uh, we are familiar with so-called PCR tests, which can either identify the infected COVID viruses. Now, we also have 
what we call uh, IgG and IgM antibody tests, which we call uh, rapid tests. Uh, this kind of test still need to be verified for the usefulness. However, if I may suggest for those who would like to make sure whether they have uh, antibody for COVID, they have to consider to do what we call neutralizing antibody test, which is more specific. Uh, so if when I will start to inject uh, vaccination on, on myself. Uh, what I prefer to do is after I receive the second dose, I will check so-called neutralizing antibody specific to COVID-19. That will make sure that I will know whether or not I'm fully immune against COVID-19. Gotcha. The last question he had, you actually mentioned this last week, but it might be useful for you to mention it again. So we have some different people. You had said, hey, let me let, let me paraphrase and you can add back. You had said getting vaccinated, if 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 you don't have the funds to do private vaccination, get whatever you can get that the government's going to give out to the population, to anybody, because getting vaccinated is better than not getting vaccinated. However, you recommended, you, you thought the mRNA ones, the Pfizer, BioNTech, and the um, Moderna were the two best ones based on what you've seen. Is that a correct summary of what you said last week? Yes, but I would like to uh, expand further by suggesting that uh, right now, our government is ready to provide, you know, at least Sinovac and also AstraZeneca. So if any of you who get a chance to register for this two kind of vaccine, please get start and move ahead. However, I would also like to uh, arrange for those who might be interested to receive Moderna, uh, Pfizer or Johnson Johnson later under alternative vaccine program. And whatever comes first, you can participate on, on that. Now, it's also advisable that for those who receive uh, Sinovac, they may consider to reunite again after three months, because we are not so sure whether Sinovac vaccine can fight against the new variants of COVID-19. So therefore, if you got a chance to get started with Sinovac, please consider first. And later on, we can arrange for you to get the new vaccine, like Messenger IA vaccine. Gotcha. Thank you. Let me just see if I had any more questions. One second. Um, I think we got them all. Those are all the ones that were submitted to me in advance. Uh, yeah, that's that's all the questions that were submitted in advance. If does anybody have any burning questions for Dr. Kim Campon that maybe he can answer or promise to get back to us? Oh, just before we do that, just raise your hand or click the raise your hand button and I'll and I'll unmute, I'll let you unmute or you can unmute yourself. The other question, the other comment I'll make. The other comment I'll make is uh, we have a little form where expats, anybody actually, but expats can register interest in getting vaccinated and they can uh, just fill it out. They could just fill it out and we will have a list. It automatically goes into a file so that Dr. Kempon has it and we know, oh, we have 137 expats who've expressed interest in getting themselves a private uh, vaccination so that when he talks to the various hospitals and they ask how many potentially, et cetera, that he'll know. And then what we're going to do is we'll come back to everybody 
and say, hey, uh, Patty International Hospital is going to have vaccines available. Here's the discount price for expat members. Uh, talk to Bangkok Patty Hospital. Here's the deal that we can get there. They're going to have Moderna. Uh, if you want to get Johnson & Johnson, um, Patty Memorial is going to have it, or Pai Sri Racha is going to have it. So uh, basically... Uh, that's the deal we're going to be able to get. So we should get discounts for doing it. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Okay. Uh, if there are not that uh, new questions coming up, uh, I would like to suggest that for the next Zoom meeting, we will schedule uh, maybe sometime later. Uh, I would like to cover the update information on COVID-19 virus itself. For example, we have learned now that after COVID-19 infected the lung, uh, they will move to the brain. And that makes it more problematic that we may have those who have stroke, Alzheimer, Parkinson, or AMS and ALS more than we uh, found beforehand. So there must be something that we must learn how to prevent the older population to suffer from so-called blood clot, also from brain problem. With this, we will need to update ourselves on the side effect of vaccination, which mostly are due to our own immune response. So for next, series of Zoom meeting, I would like to explain to all of you about what we call cytokine storm. Cytokine is a, 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 the peptide and interleukin release from immune response. So therefore, we must learn to understand how to use <laughs> the product with anti-inflammatory and antioxidative stress and so on. That would be the next idea that we keep to keep on. And meanwhile, I can also update two of you about the progress on how government would like to serve the expat. So that become more informative. Next question someone asked, it's an easy one, I think. Uh, yes. June 7th, still the date for us to be able to start registering? Okay. Uh, being a Thai DNA doctor, I could not <laughs> confirm on that. But this is something that most Thai people are watching for. We hope that if June 7 uh, gets started, we will be happy. If not, we will try our best to move ahead as well. So June 7th the target and hopefully it will get met. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kempon. I'll send you any other questions we get. And people keep the questions coming. You can send me a Facebook message. You can send me an email, dan at pattyexpatsclub.info. I'll gather up all the questions so that Dr. Kempone has them, especially if they need any research. You know, it's not just a pure medical thing that he knows because, you know, but he didn't, he's a doctor. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Kempone. And I think. And I think Peter has something to say. He unmuted himself. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, well, I just had a, uh, another question about the blood clot. Is there uh, some vaccines which are safer than other vaccines to avoid blood clots? Okay. Uh, the blood clot is more related to the effectiveness of your immune response. So any vaccine that most effective will also have more incidence of blood clot. However, we can know how to prevent it, such as drinking enough water, and maybe if you're familiar with vitamin C, those are the kind of uh, vitamin that I would recommend you to take before uh, you go in for immunization, because that has been proved to prevent it. Okay, thank you. You must come.
And Peter, you might as well give the update on Casa Pascal and things we're looking at since we're unmuted temporarily. Okay, yeah, this is a totally different topic. Um, we've been uh, enjoying brunch at Casa Pascal every Friday for the last year or so. Um, he was closed temporarily. He has now reopened for dining in, um, but he has put his prices up and he's also uh, taken away our PEC discount. Um, not quite sure exactly why. Maybe he doesn't want a large group of people in, in the restaurant now. Um, I'll talk to him again when things ease up. Um, in the meantime, we've had suggestions to look at other restaurants to see if we can get a, a, a good deal with them. Robin Hood was one that has been suggested. Um, so we're going to progress with that and see if we can come back to you with uh, some other dining options where we can get together uh, and have a good meal at a discounted price. Yeah, just I'll add one comment and then David's up. You can unmute yourself. I think you are unmuted, David, but one comment on that one. Um, I was having a chat with the owner of Robin Hood to see what he's willing to do for us. Uh, he's on vacation, but he did reply. He did send me a reply, but he'll be back. I think he's back tomorrow in his in town. So I will talk to him, see what he can do. The only reason why I like Robin Hood is it's central and it's easy to get to for most people. And we'll see. We'll see what he can do for us. All right, David, you had one. Yeah, this is a question for the doctor. I didn't quite hear everything you said. You mentioned before going getting vaccine, drink water and take what kind of vitamins? You mentioned vitamin C. Vitamin, vitamin, C. C. vitamin C. Yes. Okay, vitamin C. Lots of water and vitamin C. Okay, I got it. And take a good night's sleep. Okay, that I I would have to work on that one. Okay. <laughs> the two, the first two I can do. The third one maybe. Okay. Okay, Peter. Peter has a question. That Peter, that's you, Peter. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Uh, uh, I've got a comment to this uh, 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 restaurant. I mean, I have to smile. That's typical Thai. It's not Thai bashing, but it's typical Thai. If there are no customers, you have to charge more money. I mean, I don't know. Are they getting it one day or not? So Casa Pascal is run by Pascal Schneider, who is far from Thai, and clearly it is not Thai. It is not a Thai setup. No, it's it's maybe not not, but it's typical Thai. You you see that everywhere. No customers, more money. He's right. got plenty of customers. I, I think this is my opinion from just reading it. Um, you get to eat at his buffet from nine o'clock in the morning to one or one thirty. And he got some new stuff in, I think. And two, what normal price was two sixty nine to two eighty five. I mean, yeah, he put the price up. Well, give me a break, guys. We're talking sixteen baht. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, you know? I, I I didn't know that. So yeah, it was, but maybe yeah, it was, I'm just I'm just it adding maybe, to it. Maybe it was stupid to mention that, but uh, no, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. But just so you know, I mean, Cas Casa Pascal is not run is not a Thai restaurant. And the only I comment, I mean, if, I if, if 16 bought and my, but then we also lose our 10% discount, which <laughs> is another 30 bot. It works out. So it costs, it costs 285 instead of what did we pay Peter? 238? No, no idea. Don't, don't worry too much. No, the other Peter. Maybe, maybe two, I should two, have two, 239, 239 before. Yeah, we were paying 239 to 285. Um, the real answer, we'll find out. Peter Anders is going to talk to the owner and find out what the genesis could be. He doesn't want a group of 12 to 19 people all together coming during the current setup. We'll find out. But we'll, we'll also see where else we can go. Um, one option, like I said, we can go to Robin Hood once he tells us what he's willing to do for us. We can have the back room also, even if we're only 10 people, we can have the whole back room for ourselves. Just Ron and I used to run some meetings there. We'll do those again when now I think maybe they're allowed. Uh, and we had, you know, 10, 12 people and had no problem 
having the back room. We just didn't get a special. We didn't get a special price. We get the back room for free. So <laughs> is what it is. But I told them we need a little better than that for to attract some folks. So we'll, we'll, we'll come up with some options and we'll see who else around town is willing to um, you know, host a group of 10 to 20 of us every week uh, for some kind of a good deal. Okay, thank you very much. Don't You're welcome. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, no is, it, is it possible to, to have another question to the good doctor? Sure, he's still okay. here. Uh, I'm uh, 79 years of age, so uh -huh. I'm not really, really a teenager anymore. And mm -hmm. uh, I've got some underlying problems as well with my uh, high cholesterol and, and blah, blah, blah. I'm still confused. Uh, I mean, I try to get some information on the internet. What would be the best uh, vaccination at my age? Uh, I mean, you're, if, you're, if you look into Google or whatever on the internet, there are so many different opinions. So I really don't know what to do. Okay. Uh, I think this might be uh, the good topic that we should next touch next week. Because uh, right now, I'm so sure that in Thailand, we can offer Sinovac, Sinopharm, AstraZeneca, and Moderna at, at least. Uh, within the, the month of July up to now. Therefore, next time I will explain to you about what we learned about Sinovac, Sinopharm, AstraZeneca, and also Moderna vaccine. How to prepare. Uh, now, as a general rule of thumb, uh, those who have significant diseases such as diabetes, lung disease, uh, autoimmune disease, they are more likely to have more significant side effects than those without these kind of diseases. However, you have to keep in mind that when we will discuss with any case, we will not discuss about politics. We will discuss about the scientific regarding the risk and benefit. In your case, if you do have to contact people and have to travel around, uh, you are still very young uh, because I hope that we can all live up to 100 years old with a good quality of life. Okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, thank I you also would, would like to explain to you that each kind of diseases will have its own consequences. For example, if you suffer from lung diseases, okay, one of the measures that we must do is to stop smoking. Because if you do not do that, you will have uh, long-term consequences. So okay. therefore, most, most of the uh, discussion, uh, maybe we need to do also on private consultation basis, uh, because uh, there may be some issue that I would not be able to give you in, in the open meeting, for example. So yeah. uh, please uh, join us for next time that we'll discuss on what will be the side effect and who will have more side effect than others, for example, concerning this for vaccine. Fine, thank you very much. Thank, you. thank you. Anybody else have any final question? Okay, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Campon, and your information and the video. Um, I can give people the link if they would like to watch it. And this obviously is recorded on Facebook. So it's on the Facebook group and we will post it to YouTube. And Peter has the link for last week's and I'll post the link for this week's call. This week's Zoom will be posted also in our YouTube channel for Patty Expats Club. So it'll be in our page because Peter posts the link there. It'll be in the group since the group is where the live was located so people can watch it. Uh, Facebook and people who like YouTube can watch it on YouTube. Awesome. Everybody have a wonderful Tuesday. Thank you. Bye.